Hello, Lazio all over the world. Welcome to another episode of Lazio Lounge. We are here to talk about Torino Lazio, second match of the season of Lazio. But before we start talking about Lazio Torino, or maybe Torino Lazio, Alasdair, I told you Lazio was playing in Turin, not in Scotland. What did you do, man? <laughs> Took a wrong turning. <laughs> uh, yeah, somehow ended up back in the wrong country. But uh, well, I don't know. It's all this talk you're always giving me about how Lazio only sign players when I'm not in Rome. So I thought Mercato is about to close. We got a week or so. I'm going to be back on Friday for the Inter game. But until then, Lazio have got a few days to try and get some players in. So let's see what happens. Well, I don't know if we're going to get some players in, but it looks like we're going to get some players out because I don't know if you followed there in Scotland, but Asherby is close to sign for Inter. I'm not happy about that because I would have loved an obligation from Inter to buy the player. He's going to go on loan. Lazio was pushing for an obligation to buy out Asherby at the end of the season. It looks like it, they will have just a right to buy him at the end of the season, which we saw it in the past. It never works, right? Vavro had a, a right to, to buy, uh, uh, Murici, Escalante, etc. And it never happened. So that's a little bit concerning. Even Raul Moro has been linked to Ternana. So that's another player who could be on another club before next Friday. So that, that's something positive, right? Yeah, well, I think the Acerbi thing just needs to be sorted as soon as possible, really, because it's been clear for quite a long time that he's not going to really be involved this season. So it's it's a bit of a waste of everyone's time that it's, it's taking so long. Um, it's a shame not to get a fee. I think if they'd managed to get sell him outright and get a, a few million euros in the bank for, for a guy who's 34 years old, it would have been the best possible outcome. And so, yeah, I, I do agree with you. I mean, Inter are hardly going to be looking at this as a long-term solution. So I think the likelihood of them taking up the option to buy is is probably pretty low, considering especially a Cherby's unlikely to be a starter for them uh, when he arrives. But at the same time, I mean, he's he's a high earner. I think he's on about two and a half million a year or something. So even that, getting getting the wages off the books would be would be something, as long as Inter are paying them all throughout the loan. Yeah, but the issue is... In 12 months, he's going to be back, right? Inter is not going to sign it. And we'll have the pro the same problem with the issue that Asherbi will be one year older. So it's going to be even more difficult to loan it out. So that's why I would have loved the obligation for Inter to buy out the player at the end of the season. But doesn't look that way. But do you think... Because one thing, before we talk about Torino, five players haven't been called for the match last Saturday. And there were Akpa Pro and Acerbi, no, no mystery there. King, Ralmoro and Durmisi. Five players that are pretty much out of the project, right? And Durmisi has been out of various projects in the last four years or so with Lazio. Uh, I think it would be good if Lazio would, would be able to sell three out of five, right? Yeah, <clears throat> well... It'd be very good. I mean, I'd, I'd be impressed if if they managed to do as much as that. I mean, Moro sounds like it's it's a go to to be loaned out to Ternana, so that that's one. Um, how helpful that will be for him is another question. We'll see. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it's something we've talked about already. This Mercato is it has been good in some regards. Yeah. Alas, we managed to get some of the deadwood out in terms of Vavro Morici, but it is crazy that. Dormizi is still a Lazio player, considering how long it's been that we've known he's not not going to be yeah. a part of this squad. So, yeah, hopefully they can manage to get some of those out. And if they bring anyone else in, even better. But not, I'm not going to be crossing my fingers too much. Yeah, but we have to say that Tare did a good job this summer because Vavro, Dur eh, Vavro Murici, Javan Anderson, let's not forget Javan Anderson, Adekanye, uh, just to mention the few, I mean, I think we had more than 10 players. I think it was 12, 14 players out uh, for Lazio. So to arrive 25, that definitely an improvement. And by the way, Murici scored this weekend. So, oh. and not only him, even Maestro, it's another former Lazio player scored. So, yeah. 
I, I think we just have to live with the fact that Marici will win the Ballon d'Or within the next two years. <laughs> that's that's just life for us now. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Uh, after talking about transfer market, let's talk about Torino Lazio. It, it was a match I was really afraid of, and I got the impression that Sari was concerned about it too. Uh, last year, two draws, Lazio recovering. Lazio was down both games and find a way to equalize. Two very difficult games last year. This year, I thought it didn't start very well. First half, I thought Torino played better. But in the second, Alistair, Lazio played much better. We created four or five very good chances. I thought a big team, a team reaching the Champions League would have found a way to win. Yeah, it was interesting to see Sarri say after the game that it basically went as planned because the first half felt so kind of flat and uninspiring, really, that it was hard to really imagine that was part of the game plan. But supposedly it was in terms of, you know, containing Torino's physicality, really, and settling into the game in that regard. But I think there's definitely just a bluntness to this team that is slightly concerning now. Um, obviously managed to come back against Bologna last week and, and get two goals, but now three of the last four games, if you're including the friendlies, Lazio have failed to score. There were some opportunities yesterday, uh, sorry, on, on Saturday, but again, it's hard to really look at that game and think, oh, that's, that's a game Lazio had to win um, from the chances created. I think there's still an issue with Immobile looking too isolated. Yeah. And a lot of discussions about the midfield, maybe the place to start. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, were you surprised? Because for the people who didn't see the match, Lazio started with Cataldi, Milinko Savic, and Vecino. Rumors were that Basic would have started. Instead, Vecino started. Um, were you surprised? And what's your thought on Vecino's performance? Because he was the greatest surprise, right? Yeah, I was a bit surprised. Um, I mean, I think, you know, praised him last week for the impact he made off the bench. He wasn't on for long last week, but I thought he did a good job coming on to shore things up. Um, yeah, I mean, I get the sense that he's maybe not really f at full fitness yet. And I think that that's probably something you could say about a few players. And it's understandable. And Vecino's not a guy who's let's not forget, been playing a lot of football. I think that was his first oh. Serie A start since March. Um, so, yeah, he looked a bit off the pace, I think, for me. I mean, he didn't do anything particularly wrong. I think it would be harsh to criticise him too much, but it just felt a little bit like in a game where Lazio needed some sort of spark, um, that midfield wasn't providing it one way or another. So, Alisson, you mentioned that Sari said it went as planned. Uh, I thought Sari was concerned about the physicality of Torino. The fact that we know we, we saw Juric team playing often and they like to play man on man for the full pitch. And we saw last year how Luis Alberto struggled because he was marked for 90 minutes, even in, in our penalty box, and he struggled to move the ball. So I think that's the reason why Sari opted for this midfield. But I was thinking that probably Basic, a more physical player, would have played instead of Vecino. Is that Vecino started? I thought Lazio managed to struggle less. But as you were mentioning, without Luis Alberto, we didn't have that sparkle. Probably with Marcos Antonio, I think we would have gone better. We'll never have the proof because he didn't play. But I thought he was too scared about the physicality of the of Torino. And that's why in the first half, Lazio pretty much didn't do nothing. Well, this is something I wanted to ask you about because it seemed to me that, yeah, you, you mentioned already the two draws last season. So there's been three draws in a row between these two teams, these two coaches. And it's definitely obviously worth respecting and, and uh, planning for the strengths of your opponents. But when it comes yeah. down to it, Torino aren't a side that Lazio should be going out of their way to change their own style of play to accommodate necessarily. Um, but do you think that comes down to the fact that Juric has been more successful in the last year of instilling an identity on his team, despite having a huge turnaround of players this summer? 
than Serie yeah. has, because I think there's been a big debate around this now, like, well, what is this Lazio team? Because it's not playing possession football, playing Serie ball football, but it's also not really adapted to this kind of what we saw against Torino, kind of a more physical, defensive, reactive style of football. So the identity thing is, it was kind of obvious there where Torino are playing man-to-man, very much Urich ball, and uh, and Lazio, we weren't really seeing that quite so much. Uh, I agree in part with you in the sense, yes, the identity of this team, I'm not talking about Torino, was clear, but at the same time, they lost key players and you could see it in the pitch. Uh, to be clear, I don't rate Belotti a great player and I prefer Sanabria as a striker than Belotti. And in fact, when there were rumors in the past of Sanabria coming to Lazio, I was really happy about that because I like the player. Um, and so maybe adapting too much to a team that is not in very well rated at the moment, like Torino, isn't the right decision. But on the other side, I saw a huge improvement talking about the fence. I mean, let's not forget last year, Lazio were already conceded, I don't know how many goals. Uh, this year, things have done much better. And I think defensively, Lazio has an identity now. And maybe we're going to talk about Patrick and Romagnoli. I thought in the first half, Torino played better, but they didn't have a single chance, right? I mean, our defense was great. And one of the issues I, I thought is, was that Sakani and Felipe Anderson were too concerned of defending and, and left too much Chiro alone. But I thought the defense, at least when the other team had the ball, Lazio were, were well organized and had an identity. I think the problem is when we have the ball on our feet, we are missing a player like Luis Alberto. And so I think the job for Sari now is, okay, how can we fit Luis Alberto in this football team? And maybe even add Marcos Antonio, because I think he has huge talent, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I I don't necessarily have an issue with Lazio, Lazio system being based on a, a solid defence, because that's not what we saw last season. It just seems like a huge leap all of a sudden <laughs> from one one thing to the other. I mean, goals were not something we had to worry about last season at any point, really. Uh, second top scorers in the league, as far as I recall, behind Inter. And this awful defence that shipped, what, 58, 59 goals? Um, so it's a big jump, and it's improving defence is very important. Um, it's it's going to get you points where... We, where we lost points last season. Um, I thought Patrick was excellent again. I mean, he's he's been the centre of a lot of discussion, I guess, who's who's going to partner Romagnoli in that defence with, with Gila and um, Casale also coming in. But I think the way he started, he has to be continuing to play in that yeah. position. Um, yeah, but basically, we'll probably end up talking about the goalkeepers. But yesterday, basically, didn't need a goalkeeper because Patrick was just cutting out all the crosses by himself. So... <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, your dog's a big Patrick fan, I can hear. Um, yeah, we don't have to talk about Patrick. Um, you mentioned the goalkeeper. I wanted to mention another thing, but let's go and talk about Providel. I, I tweeted uh, joking that last match, our goalkeeper went too far out. I thought Providel against Torino didn't. And there were a lot, at least three long balls that he was... A huge advantage, and instead of going out and grabbing, he he stick to our goal line, and that was concerning from Provedel. So, you know, I was convinced before this match. I think Provedel will start against Inter after his performance. And you mentioned he didn't have to make any save, but that thing he missed out a couple of crosses in the first yeah. half. I don't know. I, it didn't give me the impression to be very confident like he did against Bologna. Did you have the same yeah, impression? The, yeah, basically, yeah. Was, well, the, the thing was, it's kind of like the two things that I praised him for after the Bologna game were how assured he was and his distribution. Yeah. And both of those things, he then kind of did the opposite in this match where he didn't look assured, especially on those crosses like you mentioned or the corners. And his passing out from the back wasn't as effective as as it had been uh, in that game. But I don't know. I mean, what 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 do you think happens now? I mean, Inter is it's a huge game, but it's quite hard to know where we stand. I don't think Providel 
played badly in that match in, in the sense that you would like to throw him out of the team. Um, but Maximiano, we can't forget, yes, he made a terrible error, but he was coming into the season as the number one. So what do you yeah. do? What do you think Sari's going to do? Someone said that Provedel was stracoshing, if you allow me this <laughs> verb, on, on, on Saturday, <laughs> which made totally sense. But which was one of the concerns, right? The reason why Stragosha yeah. is not with Lazio anymore is because of that. So I don't know. Uh, probably I will give another chance to Maximiliano. I think this week will be important to see how they, they train. If Maximiliano looked like a goalkeeper who has completely forgot his mistake, then I will give him a chance to start. Um, but overall, the defense was much better. I mean, Lazzari. Maruzic, they all played well, right? So that that was uh, really encouraging. The other thing, Alessio, you mentioned about the goals. So let's take it out. Sergei had a huge chance in the second half. He waited a couple of seconds. Now, I don't want to say it too loud, but do you think he thought, oh, the, my brother is in goal. I don't want to score against him because maybe he's losing his job. Or he simply didn't this a, a chance without reflecting about his brother. As an obituary, if it was me and I was playing in Serie A and my brother was in goals, I'd be desperate to score against him. <laughs> <laughs> I think you the you can't downplay his, the sibling rivalry. I'm sure he'd love it. Has Sergei ever scored against Vanya? I don't think so. I think he he played just once against his brother last year. I think. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's he's not been first choice all that long, I guess, has he? Yeah, it was a big chance. I mean, yeah, I, I, would, I wouldn't go as far as to say that, but it was a bit disappointing. I, I would probably, you know, use that as a way of discussing Sergei as, as a whole, though, because I think his performance was a bit underwhelming. Um, there's maybe we can talk about the the slow start element again because it it seems to be something that comes up quite often. Um, you know, the fact that he takes a bit of time to get going in a season or to get up to peak physicality but then again this year it feels like there it shouldn't really so much because he's had a full preseason uninterrupted there's not been any major tournament or anything to kind of well I guess the, the some nations league games but nothing beyond that so um I don't know do you do you think it's just that or is it because the transfer market's still open people will talk about no, that I think, just... I, I think the reason he's Big, and we know that usually slim players like Lazzari take less to get in shape, while players like Miliko Savic, it's it's a different matter. So they take longer. And it was funny because Sari said, for me, it looks in a better shape than last year. So I, I thought he played really badly against Torino. And I know it's difficult, but I would have took him off earlier, to be honest with you. The interesting thing with is is that we're actually kind of talking about the midfield as as in like the options and the best way of structuring it because that's something we've not really talked about for years because it's always been Alberto Lucas Milinkovic and now all of a sudden we had three different midfields in the space of 90 minutes in the Torino game we've had Basic starting one game we've had Vecino starting another we're yet to see Alberto from the start we're yet to see Marcos Antonio yeah. from the start and all of a sudden, it's kind of quite hard to work out what this Lazio midfield, the first choice midfield, is actually going to look like this season. Well, finally, you have choices, right? And Sadi said it after the match. I have now choices in midfield, so I can pick and choose depending on, on the opponent. And this usually is a positive sign. But I don't know. I, I would have preferred to see Marcos Antonio coming in earlier. I, I thought Sadi over, overthinked. This, this midfield, it was not the right choice for me, obviously. It's easy now to say it. But I think Marcos Antonio deserves a chance. Now, I know against Inter, it's not very easy for him to start. But sooner or later, he needs to start. And I think the job of this season is, again, finding a way to make Luis Alberto and Milko Savic play together. Um, I think the rest of the team is finding a way to make it happen. I mean, the defense is much better today and the wingers as well. So I think this year could be easier. But 
yeah, we have to see. Now, Alizar, I don't know if you want to talk about the rumors about Sevilla making another bid, probably, maybe, before the end of the summer transfer for Luis Alberto. Do you think this is the reason why Sarin doesn't start him yet? I don't know. I don't, I don't see it happening, honestly. I don't see Sevilla offering 25 million euros for Luis Alberto this season. No, I I feel it's more that Sarri's not totally convinced that that midfield has got the right balance to really provide the defensive structure that this team needs because it's it's easy to blame the defense and the defense was pretty dreadful at times last season but it is a it is a team effort keeping clean sheets and if you're having Milinkovic Savic and Alberto in the same midfield together you're perhaps sacrificing some of the defensive work that another another combination of players might might put in. But at the same time, you clearly suffer in the other way. I mean, is yeah. it can't be a coincidence that Chiro isn't getting as many chances when Alberto's not starting the games. Um, I mean, he's he's got he's already got one goal and he's even managed to get a couple of chances in, in this match where he had very little service. But at the same time, I don't think anyone in the team links up with Immobile in the, in the same way, has the same kind of chemistry uh, to provide him with opportunities. So I think that's something Lazio might suffer for if they continue to to leave him out. Well, I think, Alizar, I don't know if you agree with me, but one of the reasons of Chiro Mobile struggling, at least against Torino, was the wingers far too back. I know you have to defend. I know Torino is a team that like to push high. But Felipe Anderson was far away from Chiro Mobile. And if you go and watch the match, you see that a lot of time when Chiro had the ball, he was surrounded by four or five Torino players and there were no sign of Zaccagni or Felipe Anderson close to him. And it's difficult. I mean, even Messi would struggle with five opponents surrounding him and no, no teammates to help him, right? So I think that's one of the things Sari has to work because... I think the, the the defensive side improve, but you have to score to win matches. So that's something surprisingly, because usually Lazio hasn't got didn't have an issue in the past to score. But this year looks different, right? Yeah, um, yeah, no, absolutely. I think that that, that was something Juric did quite well. I think that those the wing backs kind of. Pins pinned the Lazio wingers back a bit, and because he almost needs them to be covering those, especially especially yeah. when Torino are attacking, because they were playing with kind of three up front as well as the wing backs out wide. So, you know, Radonjic or Vlasic could occupy the kind of full backs while the wing backs are getting forward as well, and it's it gives you a lot to think about. Um, perhaps as well, yeah, like already mentioned, the fact that Sari's yet to get the better of Juric that he he's, doesn't want to be defeated um, no. rather than trying to set out in the way to, to kind of really attack that team. But I, I think it was a, a bit of a missed opportunity. It's easy to say in retrospect, but there's yep. that, that Torino de, is a good, it's a decent team, but I don't no. think Vanya is an amazing goalkeeper. I don't think their defense is a, is a particularly strong back three. And I think that Lazio's yeah, probably the best, best chance was to kind of, really push and put pressure on them rather than re reacting to them you know you know one thing Alizar, is i was surprised to see lazari not pushing like like against bologna and lazari you have to admit is one of the secret is one of the weapon weapon of lazio right when he pushes on the on that side and felipe anderson passing the ball deep he can really be a threat we saw it against bologna and we saw it last year Against Torino, I hardly remember any time Lazio pushing on the right, serving long ball to Lazzari. I don't understand why. I didn't understand why this didn't happen. Probably a similar reason, though. I mean, he's he's under pressure to be covering other players a lot of the time. I don't know if there's there's maybe not enough of a defensive system in place to allow him to push forward because Milinkovic Savage is on his side and if Lazzari is getting forward, you're you're obviously leaving a gap. Is there is there enough of a system in place to then cover for that gap? Is one thing doing against Bologna, maybe against Torino, there's not as much space to do that. Um, but yeah, I mean, on the whole, I think the defense is good. It, it's just 
it's it's the same old question, isn't it? Is finding the balance. It feels like this Lazio team is capable of playing defensively or playing very attacking style, but yeah. there's yet they're yet to find the kind of equilibrium where where they're doing both things at once. Um so well hopefully that starts on Friday, but it's a big ask. Uh big game yeah, Inter, coming up. Inter didn't convince me in the first day against Lecce, but it's true. Spezia for me this this year it's a weaker, much weaker team than last year, right? But you know they win convincingly, and uh, I think, and I said it, they are the favorite for the Scudetto this season so far. And after two matches, I still think that's that's the case, especially because Alizer, I saw a different Milan playing this this year, uh, this season. They are making some mistakes in defense, and uh, so. I think Inter is going to be the favorite to win the Scudetto. We have to see what Juventus does in the summer transfer. But, yeah, they're probably the favorite for me for the for the Scudetto. So it's going to be very tough for Lazio. Yeah, for me too. Um, yeah, the game on, um, on uh, when was it, Saturday night, they, they, they looked pretty impressive. I mean, yeah, opposition you have to take into account to a certain extent. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, Spezia were playing with a back five keeping things very compact, doing all the, the annoying stuff that lower league t- teams like to do against you to try and frustrate. And it did take them a while to get going, but just the, the strength and depth of that squad is the scary thing for me because Lukaku and Martinez um, linked up very well in that game. They have a pre-existing relationship, obviously, and, and look like they're getting back to where they left off now. But even beyond that, you know, after they were 2-0 up, Inzaghi brought on Correa and Dzeko, and then they go and link up. And I think it was Gagliardini who came off the bench, passed to Dzeko, who then passes to Correa, who scores in its sight. And that's your bench. You know, that's, yeah. that's it's, it's a lot of strength and depth they've got there. And now they've got Mkhitaryan to alternate with Chalinoglu. And yeah, he's going to be injured, I think, on Friday. But it, it's just, uh, there's a lot of weapons in that team. And I also think that team is further down well quite a lot further down the line in terms of knowing what it is and how it plays than than Lazio are so I don't know it happened last year though did get a win in this fixture last year so it it is possible yeah but um I think we're gonna have to well it'll be interesting to see the selection for this game is is going to be fascinating um do you reckon it'll be similar to keep it kind of tight uh physical defensive approach in the same way as Torino what do you expect well, well, last year, it was the first time Basic started instead of Luis Alberto. Mm. And I thought it worked well against Inter last year. And as well, when Luis Alberto came in in the second half, it worked well. Luis Alberto did the assist for Miniko Savic. So I don't know if um, Sari will try to replicate this this type of system. I would be curious to see if Marcos Antonio starts. I think that would be a, a huge improvement for Lazio. But Alistair, after the first two days of Serie A, we said that Lazio was fighting for the fifth, sixth position. After seeing this Napoli, <laughs> what, what do you think? Are we changing position? Do you think? Uh, I mean, I don't think we put Napoli in the top four. I think we put it in the top five. But I mean, they're impressive. They really are. Yeah, I made the mistake of tweeting my preseason predictions, so they're they're out in the public domain now. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's always hard to know, isn't it? Because Napoli started so strongly last year and then obviously faded. But, I mean, they did, did finish in the top four, obviously. Um, I think the big thing has been Cavaradona, who has absolutely <laughs> smashed Serie A to pieces so far. That guy looks unbelievable. Um, and, yeah, it's, you know, they've they've not been playing the strongest teams so far. Um, you know, Verona and Monza is quite a, quite a nice cushy start for them. But at the same time, yeah, they're they're looking strong. Um, it'd be interesting to see, I guess, what happens with Juve because the Di Maria was absolutely on fire in his debut, and then immediately is ruled out for a month with injury. So that's going to happen tonight. We'll see how they do. But yeah, I mean, you know, you can't say too much after two rounds, but I think that's probably still a realistic objective for Lazio. What I would say is that it's. I think Atalanta aren't aren't done and dusted in the way that a lot of people mm. seem to be thinking they were. Um, I think they'll be in that fight as well. And well, who knows with Fiorentina because they obviously slipped up against Empoli. But um, 
but but they are a strong side and decent strength and depth in that team as well now. Yeah, I think Atalanta and Fiorentina will fight, but they are a little bit behind, right? I got the impression. I saw Atalanta both against Milan yesterday and against Sampdoria last week, and they didn't convince me. So they are a good team, obviously. They took one point out of Milan, which is not easy, but I didn't see the same team of last year. So I'm curious to see how they will perform, considering that this, especially till November, they're going to play a lot of matches. So it's going to be a little bit complicated for, for everybody. Fiorentina, if they qualify for the Conference League, which I think will happen, and all the other teams fighting in the Europe League as well and the Champions League. So Atalanta has a little bit of advantage, right? They're not playing. But I don't know. I think, I mean, Zapata didn't score one goal in the last 14 matches, something like that. And Muriel is struggling as well. So I think the biggest difference is they're not scoring like they did in the past. Well, I don't know if you saw the, the Gasparini masterclass, uh, at least what he'll claim was a masterclass now, but complaining about Malinovsky's Not scoring, goal return yeah. and basically putting him up for sale the day before the Milan game, then putting him in the starting lineup and then Malinovsky scores. So, yeah, quite clever perhaps, or just complete pot luck. Who knows? <laughs> I, I don't know. He said Marinovsky scores. We are looking for someone who scores more than six goals because Marinovsky yeah. scores all you see. And then after the match, he said, well, those are the type of typical matches of Marinovsky. I mean, against Milan, you're looking for players that make the difference in that type of matches, right? So, yeah, I don't like Asperini. I don't... Uh, <laughs> as a human being, as a manager, I think he's great, but he wear out the players, right? After a couple of years, you have to move out, move on. So, yeah, it's good. I think Lazio has to step up a little bit if they want to fight for the fourth, fifth, fifth position this year. But we have time. The problem is, Alizer, market closed the 1st of September before we wrap her up. Do you think Lazio is going to sign any player from now till the end of the transfer market? I don't think so, if nothing ha big happens. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I would be surprised. I think that the the right the right kind of deal has to present itself, and it, I'm not sure it does at the moment. I mean, there has been a lot of talk about a left back still. I think it'd be great, and Sari clearly, explicitly has said that he would he would like one. But at the same time, you know, there's been talk of Reg Region coming in recently, and yep. if it's a loan with um, the option of twenty million, it's Lazio aren't going to pay that. No. <laughs> I mean, maybe Spurs don't know that, and they can just <laughs> get him in for one year. But, uh, but I mean, that that would be a, a, th a pretty great signing, to be honest. I think, but um, I just find it quite hard to to see that happening, having no. having heard Lotito and Tare kind of talking about how well they've already done. So, let's see. I think even though getting rid of some of the players who who aren't going to be part of the squad would be a big success in itself. So hopefully that can that can happen. Yeah, I don't see Reguillon coming to Lazio. I don't see it happen. But who knows? Um, and the other thing, Alizar, is are we sure we need a left-back and not a Vision Mobile? Well, you know, Napoli went and signed Simeone. And I think I think we're, we've been in agreement on this for a while, with, that Simeone would have been ideal as a Vice Mobile. And I can't remember the exact... Um, the terms of the deal, but I don't think it was that bad, really. No. I don't think it was all that expensive. And um, come on, Napoli, you don't need him. They've got so many players. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's frustrating. I, you know, Cancellieri's yet to obviously operate in that role in Serie A this season. I'm not sure he's going to, I think it's just too big an ask for him. But yeah, so I, I, in summary, I would agree with you. I think that's a bigger pressing concern, but I think it's less likely to happen yeah. than, than anything. Yeah, and, and luckily we signed Cancellieri because even on the wingers, we don't have that many options because we started Zaccagni and Felipe Anderson and on the bench we had Pedro and Cancellieri and Luca Romero. So I, I love Luca Romero and I love Cancellieri. Are they ready for a team fighting for the Champions League? Not sure about that. It, still, Cancellieri played really well against Bologna, came in against Torino and did, gave his best. Don't think it was enough to change the match. But, you know, probably for a bigger team, you would love a more experienced, more ready player. 
in that position. Yeah, it's true. Um, I think Pedro coming back is actually going to be quite a big yeah. boost to this team, to be honest. I think he's, he's 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 still got a hell of a lot of quality, did a lot, in, especially in the big games last season. I think I wouldn't be surprised to see him kind of get straight into the starting lineup against Inter if, uh, if he's fit enough to do so. Um, so yeah, hopefully he can he can provide a bit of a lease of life to that to this attack because it's it's missing it's missing something at the moment and yeah maybe just having something like that happen could help bring it back to life a bit. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Again, thanks, Alistair, for joining me. Remember, we're playing in Rome Friday, not Scotland. Okay. Ah, okay, I'll be there. <laughs> well, we we have to see if in Europe League we're playing in Scotland. Who knows? Maybe it's going to happen. Uh, well, we'll see. <laughs> anyway, thanks everybody for listening. Remember to rate and review our podcast. We are on iTunes, Spotify, Spreaker, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We want to reach 1K before the end of the year, so please help us. And we're going to be back after Lazio Inter, a very complicated and tough match. Bye, everybody. Cheers.